So I have said work methods and motion economy has got two parts. We have work methods and we have motion economy. Work methods is simply the methods of work, how we work. Then we have motion economy and I have said motion means movement. So motion economy is like reducing movement. In other words, making sure you are not moving up and down all the time. Like for example, in our case, you know that in the kitchen you usually have a practical for, you are supposed to be there for a maximum of six hours. Mpaka utoke. Kutoka wingie, mpaka utoke. Ama five hours. So it means if you do not reduce your movement, iso six hours zitaisha kama ujamaliza. For example, to seme uwa today I have a menu and you gonna beef, you gonna rice, you gonna skuma, you gonna fruit salad, na coffee with milk. Lakini, ni taenda kwa Martin, ni chukue beef. Yende ni pike beef. I go back to Martin, ni patie rice. I go cook rice. I go back to Martin again, ni patie skuma. Yende ni pike skuma. Then I remember now, time is up. Nasina coffee. I go back again to Martin. Martin ni patia coffee. I go to the kitchen. Rudy. Martin ni patia maziwa. Now, that is a lot of movement. So when you look at motion economy, we try to look at how do we minimize this movement. For example, that is why you see us to nachukua all the ingredients kutoka store. We carry all of them to the kitchen. Why? To reduce the time. That is motion economy now. To reduce the movement of from the kitchen back to the store, back to the kitchen, back to the store. So with the work methods and motion economy, we still simply be looking at how do we make work easier in the kitchen, in how we work, or how are we going to be efficient, and also how do we minimize that a lot of movement so that we don't get extra tired at the end of the day, we do not get injuries because of straining a lot, and also we work in a manner that is giving us some efficiency and you're also able to complete our tasks. So I want you to write our first subtopic. Our first big subtopic is motion economy. I'll talk about work methods, but I, will, I want to begin with motion economy. So write that as our first subtopic, motion economy. And then under it, we have principles of motion economy principles of motion economy and why am i calling them principles principles are like rules so when we say principles of motion economy we are looking at what ways can we use or which methods can we use to minimize excess movement from the kitchen back to the store, or even within the kitchen itself, from one corner to the other to the other. So, right is about principles of motion economy. We're going to define what they are. So, we write this is a set of rules. This is a set of rules and suggestions. This is a set of rules and suggestions. This is a set of rules and suggestions to improve the manual work. To improve the manual work in production. It is a set of rules and suggestions to improve the manual work in production and reduce fatigue. Fatigue is that excessive tiredness and reduce fatigue and unnecessary movement and reduce fatigue and unnecessary movement by the worker ama by the staff unnecessary movement by the worker or by the unaweza worker ama staff so the person who is working for them to reduce that excessive moving up and down 
they come up with rules. So those rules will help you to, for example, when in the kitchen, and those who I teach practical, when I say collect everything that you need now before we begin the practical, like do pre-prep, and as you do pre-prep, if I've given you the work of today you are making braised beef stew, make sure you have every single ingredient, atakama ni salt, because I do not expect you got into the kitchen at two, and then at four, you are telling me there is no salt. Now, how are you knowing that there is no salt at four when you did pre-prep at two? So during previous preparation, that is when you are supposed to make sure everything is there. So that is like a rule. Make sure during previous preparation, you have every ingredient and that will help you avoid a lot of back and forth to the store and back in different corners of the kitchen. Maybe you are looking for salt because everybody is using salt or you are looking for cooking oil. Put pour your cooking oil in your own jug. To avoid the napika chapati, atuna mafuta, sisi tuna fry fish, wametumia mafuta yote. So to avoid that, come up with what? Rules. Now these rules are the ones we are calling principles of motion economy. Now, we are going to write some examples. Not examples. Now write another statement. Excessive movements in the kitchen. Excessive movements in the kitchen can lead to work related trauma. Trauma. Trauma and trauma stress. Work related. Trauma. And when we say work related trauma, this is like excessive, like whatever we've called fatigue. So, now write another subtopic. Now, before you write subtopic, write this statement waste of motion. Waste ni kuaribu. So when you say waste of motion, kuna manisha, mile movement in SID, kuna move, move, but you are not, you are not productive. Like you are very busy in the kitchen, but after two hours, there is nothing you've produced. Aujia pika ata rice, aujia pika ata, ata skuma, and you've been very busy, you've been moving up and down. That is waste of motion. So you've been moving, lakini umeku ukiaribu, iyo movement, umeku ukiaribu tayo, na ngubu yako. So waste of motion, is any motion, waste of motion, is any motion of staff or equipment. Waste of motion is any motion of staff or equipment that does not add value to the product any motion of man or equipment that does not add value to the product or service. It does not add value to the product or service. So we've already said that motion means movement. So when we say waste of movement, it's like you are moving, but you are not doing anything. For example, kama ulipewa kazi ya kupika ugali, you are just moving up and down. Pengini uliwekelea maji, nendelea kuboil. You are realizing that you are going back to the store. So you've moved a lot. Gas So at this particular time, there is waste of motion. Pale kwa gas, you gas in Asia. There is more waste of motion because you are moving up and down. You are already tired, but you have not produced anything. So kama ukulikuwa kwa group fulani, kwa hiyo group umewaribia time. And then, if your ugali needs to be served again, that is the product you are supposed to produce. Ugali, how they produce. So, it, it causes, it does not add value. In other words, it brings a loss. Write another statement down there. Wasteful motion. Wasteful motion. Is caused by the following. Wasteful motion is caused by the following. 
wasteful motion is caused by the following. Number one, poor workstation layout. Poor workstation layout. Layout is an arrangement. Topic one, the production is going into a kitchen organization. And kitchen organization is how is the arrangement of the kitchen when it comes to the work surfaces, like where is the sink, where is the cooking area, where is the cold preparation area, is all sorted. So when we say poor workstation layout, we mean that your kitchen arrangement is wrong. You gonna a lot of backtracking. There is no clear, clear line of doing things from receiving, storing, preparation, production, presentation, service, all those as equal in line. So when we have a poor workstation layout, ata ukitaka wewe kama mpishi, ku minimize motion, you cannot. Why? Because the way the kitchen is designed, it is designed in such a way that it is forcing you to keep coming and going back to the same station. So poor workstation layout, hyphen. This causes excessive working, excessive working, Bending and reaching. Maybe we do the do sana. So excessive walking, bending and reaching. Then another course, number two, poor method design. Poor method design what is a design a design is a way of doing something poor method design when you're using the, the wrong method of doing something poor method design hyphen for instance for instance transferring things from one hand to another for instance, transferring things from one hand to another. Transferring things from one hand to another. When we say poor method design, we are simply, in other words, we are saying using the wrong method of work. Using the wrong method of work. In other words, you are not doing the right thing. You are doing things the opposite way. So that will make you, because you now, at, at long as you'll have to do it the right way, it's like you are doing double tasks. The other cause, poor workplace organization. Poor workplace organization. Poor workplace organization your workplace may type of buyer, poor workplace organization so the place of work itself is poorly organized so here it is not only the workstation co2 station yeah it's the entire place so the entire place where everybody is yes? uh this point three poor workplace organization is it not the same as the poor workstation layout now that is what I'm explaining right now. So I am saying, when we talk of poor workstation layout, a station is your place. Kama unapika skuma, your place ya skuma. Your skuma place. But when we are talking about workplace, we are talking now about the entire kitchen. Like the entire place, now where everybody else is working. And when you remember, when we talked about kitchen organization, again, I'm taking you back there. We talked about the, the, the kitchen layouts. We have the U shape, the L shape, the corridor, the one wall, is So, come on to one poor workplace organization. It means your kitchen is not having the appropriate kitchen layout. Like, what one gongana gongana, if I can use that word. So you do not have your own personal space to work on. The, the place itself is like mixed up. But when you go back to point number one, yeah, poor workstation layout. Station here place, so let's say 
you are in the cold kitchen. You are supposed, let's say, no, let me not use the example of cold kitchen. Let's say you are making fish. You are making fish. But then, when you look at where you are picking the fish from, like from the store to your own station now, the fish place, to where you are supposed to give out the fish to, you find that that particular workstation is disorganized. It is not in a clear line of, I receive, I store, I issue, I prepare, I cook, I present, I serve. You as a person, as that particular chef where you station. But when you come to this other new point, workplace is the entire kitchen. Kila mtu anafanya vitu kila mahali. Like I'm supposed to be cutting skuma here, somebody else also wants to, to cut nyama. The same place. Now that is workplace. So I hope that point is understood. Now, another reason, another cause, number four, number four, large batch sizes. Large batch sizes. Batch, what is batch? Batch ni kama... It's like you are doing work in large amounts. You are doing work in large amounts. You are doing a lot of work at the same time. So when we are talking of large batch sizes, in other words, we are trying to say you are overwhelmed. You have a lot of work to do until now there is no way you can just do it in a way that you will not get tired. By the time you are done with it, you will be extra tired and it will force you maybe to do a lot of walking, a lot of bending, a lot of backtracking and such kind of things. So large batch sizes hyphen. Having excessive work. Having excessive work. Which will force you to move a lot. Having excessive work. Which will force you to move a lot. Now, that is all about what causes wasteful motion. Let's have another subtopic. Symptoms of the waste of motion. Symptoms of the waste of motion. Now, when we are saying symptoms, like how will we know that you have wasted time? Let's take, for example, the day when you will be doing your neck exam. Remember, when you will be doing your neck exam, you will do it alone. Yo siku wakuta kwa na kugawiwa kazi ya tuwa unapika ugali, uyu anapika nyama, uyu anapika cabbage. No. You will be the person to produce the nyama, you will be the person to produce rice, the same person to produce cabbage, the same person to produce a cake, the same person to produce coffee and milk. So, in that particular scenario, how will we know that you have wasted time? To know that you've wasted time, one, you will not finish the exam. Tambua time imeisha, present chakula, isavue, sayo ndu nakumbuka, una kuanga na coffee, na sina coffee. Ama una kumbuka, ata keki yangu nipelea kwa oven, gisa hau. So, those are some of the symptoms of waste of motion. Like you moved a lot, but you did not accomplish your, your goal. So for instance, how kumaliza mtihani. Another symptom ni, you become extra tired. Umechoka, umechoka ni kama umeshinda jikoni the whole day. It's only six hours. So let's read the symptoms. Number one, lowering of work efficiency. Lowering of work efficiency. That is the first symptom. Lowering of work efficiency. Number two. 
Now, when I say lowering of work efficiency, what do I mean? I mean, what is efficiency? Being efficient means being able to produce as expected. So, lowering work efficiency, example, ni kama hiyo, you, you don't finish your, your tasks. Or if it is in the kitchen, you will burn some food. Some of your food is not well cooked. Some other food is already burned. Zingine ziliungua, zingine azikuiva. That is what I mean. So, lowering of work efficiency. You've done the work, yes, but the product is not as was as expected. Another symptom, number two, muscle and back strains. Muscle and back strains. Back strains. The one muscle strains, back strains. Why? Because maybe you overreached for things, you walked a lot, you ran a lot. So muscle and back strains. And this can lead to sickness. And this can lead to sickness. So those are symptoms. Let's have a subtopic showing us examples of how we can waste motion. So examples of waste of motion. Examples of wastes of motion. Examples of wastes of motion. So when we say examples of waste of motion, we are trying to say that we are looking at a way of or examples which make us waste time in the whether it is in production or wherever other place but in our case here we are like basically talking about the kitchen what will make us waste time in the kitchen just just a moment just a minute let me check something then let me pause. Right, we can now continue. And I was talking about the examples. Examples of waste of motion. So how what are some examples of the things that you will do? That will make you waste time or move a lot in the kitchen or do things that you are not supposed to do, like reaching things which are far away from you, like bending a lot. So example number one. Heavy objects, heavy objects placed on low or high shelves. Heavy objects placed on low or high shelves. Now, when something is very heavy and it is placed on a low shelf, it means we'll have to bend and lift it, and it is heavy. Remember, we are not supposed, you are not supposed to, we talked about accidents. You are not supposed to be bending a lot in the kitchen. You are not supposed to be lifting heavy things. Again, if it is heavy and it is placed on a very high shelf, again, we'll have to strain to reach it and be able to use. So heavy objects placed on low or high shelves. Number two, another example. Searching for tools and equipment. Searching for tools and equipment utafuta you go to, into the kitchen knowing that you are supposed to cook chapati then you need your flour you let it rest na sasa ile time when unataka ku roll that is when you start looking for the rolling pin unatafuta haiko you start looking for mati mati na meenda sokoni ameenda kwa supermarket so now you have to sit and wait for martin akuja kufungulia store akupatia rolling pin anakuja anakupatia you roll you are you have you have fly you make the two small balls now you want to cook you go back to the cabinet hakuna griddle ile pani ya chapati again you go back you start looking for martin akuja kufungua store akupatia pan so that is an example of doing what searching for equipment Another example, number three, walking across workspaces. 
walking across work spaces to use machines working across walking across not working walking across work spaces to use machines that is another thing which makes you waste time walking across work spaces to use machines i'll give you a very good example which happens a lot during exam now wakati exam ya nek inafanyika what you will do usually have blender ikwangi moja zinakuaga i think mbili ama tatu so our usual kitchen hiyo inakuaga ni kitchen ya mtihani ya cfb then we usually have classes mara nyingi hizo classes huwa pia zinatumika kwanza nyinyi watu wati sana like a class like 501 hiyo inakuaga ni kitchen class kama 512 inakuaga ni kitchen so you find kuna blender yenye iko our normal kitchen there is another blender yenye uko chini 512 na ingine iko uko 501 so what do people do we uko 512 mko na blender yenu then mnaacha mtu wa 501 anakuja anabeba na wako na yao anakuja anabeba hiyo blender but the time that we want to use the blender now you, you, you remember oh we gave somebody our blender and the person did not return so what are you going to do you blender itakuja you move from 512 unaenda 501 kuuliza mwenye ulipatia blender anakwambia sijui nani alichukua so now you, you are on the move you are running up and down looking for the blender so that is just an example of how you will work across work surfaces to look, to use machines unataka blender lazima u blend whatever you want to blend lakini kwa sababu ilichukuliwa you will go looking for it all over now that is what that particular example means now write another statement down there so we are done with the examples write a statement the principles of motion economy the principles of motion economy are grouped the principles of motion economy are grouped into four categories the principles of motion economy are grouped into three categories namely into three categories namely now remember to listen our first subtopic in tumeanza na principles of motion economy tumesema principles ni kama rules ama guidelines zinakuguide ndio usi waste time zinakuguide ndio usikuwe excessively tired they are trying to help you one manage time two be effective and also not get so fatigued na tunasema ziko na categories so namely number one, use of the human body that is number one, use of the human body na ndio maana kama jikoni tunatukona tunakuaga na rules one, you should not bend in the kitchen usually say maintain an upright posture usilalie meza usikanyage juu ya meza usikalie work surface those are some rules to make, for example tukikuacha uketi you will not work as faster as you would have done when 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 standing tukikuacha ulalie meza again you will not be as fast and sometimes you people think that ukilalia meza unapumzika unapumzika ndio but you are now straining your back unachokesha mgongo that's why at the end of the practical you will feel extra tired so the first category is about the use of the human body how are you supposed to behave in the workshop when i say in the workshop na maanisha in the practical room another category number two, arrangement of the workplace arrangement of the workplace that is another category how you are supposed to arrange your place of work in a way that you are going to manage your movements category number three, design of tools and equipment design of tools and equipment zile equipment unatumia zinakaaje for example unakata nyama but you are using a fruit knife kukata hiyo nyama 
you will take forever cutting it because you are using the wrong equipment. At the end of the day, you'll be very tired. And then category number four, time conservation. Time conservation. Lazima kukue na time limit. Lazima kila task iku imepewa, kazi, imepewa timing. That's what we usually say. Kama ni previous preparation, ukona one hour. Then ukona production. Then pia ukona time limit ya presentation. And then time limit ya clearing from the kitchen because you cannot give you the entire day to just do one task. So now, if we are to have an effective motion economy, we must consider those four categories. Now we are going to look at them individually. So right, the first subtopic, number one, use of the human body. Use of the human body. So these are four categories. Zitagua sasa kama subtopics. And there are subtopics where we are going to be writing some examples of rules of what you should do or what you should not do. So use of the human body. So under it, write this. When possible, when possible, Roman one, when possible, full colon, then Roman one, the two hands should begin and complete their movement at the same time. When possible, full colon, Roman one, the two hands should begin and complete their movement at the same time. At the same time. What are we trying to say here? Tumia mikono yako yote will use both of your hands. Number two, Roman two, Roman two, the two hands should not be idle at the same time. The two hands should not be idle at the same time. So in other words, do not be idle in the kitchen. Ukojikoni na hakuna kitu umefanya. Uko kwa group ya watu wenye wanagawanya tasks and there is nothing that you are doing. You are just standing. Mikona yako umeka kwa mfuko ya ya chef jack ya tama ya apron. That is what we are saying. So the two hands should not be idle at the same time. Roman 3. Motion of the arms. Vile mikono yako ina move. Motion of the arms. Motion of the arms should be symmetrical. Should be symmetrical. What is being symmetrical? At the same level. At the same level. I'm a parallel. If I can use that. Parallel. So motions of the arms should be symmetrical. And in the in opposite directions. Motion of the arms should be symmetrical and in opposite directions. Full stop. So vile mikono yako ina move, inafa i move at the same time and in opposite di direction. Kama mkono moja ina bele ingine inafa ku inaenda nyuma. But at the same time. That is simultaneously. Now, Roman 3, is it Roman 3 or Roman 4? Roman 4. Momentum should be employed. Momentum should be up, should be employed to help the worker. Momentum should be employed to help the worker, but should be reduced to a minimum. but should be reduced to a minimum whenever it has to be overcome but should be reduced to a minimum whenever it has to be overcome by muscular efforts but should be reduced to a minimum whenever 
it has to be overcome by a muscular effort. Now, what are we trying to say here? Momentum, what is momentum? Lazima kukwe na, na movement, ndiyo. Momentum lazima ikuwe pale. You cannot say, I'm just standing at the, my, my work surface, cutting fruit salad, I'll be static. Sitatoka hapa ndiyo ni semester time. No, utatoka. Why? If you are making fruit salad, you will peel your fruits. After peeling them, you will make a syrup. Auta tenginezea syrup kwa work surface, you'll have to go to the cooking area. You will also have to go and drain the syrup to separate the, the solids from the liquids and cool it. Again, these of roots will need to be taken to the fridge. So momentum lazima itakuwa pale. You will have to move. But what we are saying, itakuwa minima kwa sababu kuna mpangilio. So that you do not get excessively tired. That is now in the use of your body. How are you using your body in this particular case as a principle of motion economy? Now, another Roman, Roman 5. Work should be arranged. Work should be arranged so that eye movements, macho, eye movements, work should be arranged so that eye movements are confined to a comfortable area are confined to a comfortable area without the need a comfortable area without the need for frequent changes of focus without the need for frequent changes of focus. So pia tunangalia usichokeshe macho. So you are saying the eye movement should be arranged. Your work, your work should be arranged in such a way that the eye movement is confined. Like concentrate on one thing first. Malizane now then concentrate on another one. That is all about our number one. How to use your human body. How to make sure your body is not going to get fatigued. Number two arrangement of the workplace i hope you are still following so that is the other category of motion economy principle arrangement of the workplace that is number two so this one is majorly about how do you arrange your workplace in such a way that you are going to follow the principles of motion economy or how should you arrange your work to minimize excessive movement in the kitchen so under arrangement of workplace, write Roman 1, definite and fixed stations. Definite and fixed. Definite and fixed stations should be provided. Definite and fixed stations should be provided for all tools and materials definite and fixed stations should be provided for all tools and materials to permit habit formation to permit habit formation what is a habit habit ni mazoea now when we say a definite and fixed station should be provided for tools and equipment. What are we trying to say? If it is our kitchen, let me use the example of our kitchen. When you get into the kitchen, kila siku unajua sufuria uwa zinakuwa ile site. Yombo zote zinakuwa ile site. Now, that is fixed. Unajua kila siku nikitaka sufuria penye nitachukua. Now, suppose every day you get into the kitchen, unapata zimehamishwa, zimepelekwa, into a different place that will waste time because now every day you have to start figuring out where do i get a sufuria where do i get a cooking stick where do i get you can cause a sufuria such kind of things so when you are arranging the workplace we are saying there are things come and equipment to do the oven waiko pale blender waiko ile side vyombo waziko his side come and arrange zinakuwaga hapa katikati so that is what you are calling definite and fixed stations 
Roman two. Tools, equipment, and ingredients. Tools, equipment, and ingredients should be prepositioned. Tools, equipment, and ingredients should be prepositioned, prepositioned to reduce searching. There should be prepositions, prepositioned to reduce searching. What is to preposition? To preposition is to position something somewhere because you will need it. Na hii ndiyo, ndiyo maana wa tunafanya previous preparation. When we are doing previous preparation, when tunaosha our vegetables, we are peeling the carrots, we are, we are also knowing the meat, we draw ice. Now, when we are doing those things, at that stage is when we start realizing, oh, tukona fish na tumepewa lamp. So we return the lamp, tuchukue fish, tundio tunafaa kupika. Ama, tumepewa kuku, tumepewa kuku moja, tunafaa kukua na kuku tatu. So at that particular point, you will pick it, ndiyo, we preposition. Iweke penye inafaa kukua, penye utaichukua kama ingredient, when you will be now actually producing. So that is what that particular point means. Roman 3. Materials and ingredients materials and ingredients should be collected at one go materials and ingredients should be collected at one go and brought as close to the point of use and brought as close to the point of use as possible. Materials and ingredients should be collected at one go and brought as close to the point of use as possible. So that is another principle of reducing motion, motion when it comes to arranging the work. So we are saying Collect all your ingredients at once. Zibebe zote kwa store. Bring them to, close to the point of what? Point of use. Kama nipale jikoni, zibebe zote, zibeleke jikoni. So that we can avoid realizing when I want to cook meat, naendea nyama pegeake. Kama nimekumbuka nikona rice, sasa naendea rice. To avoid that, you bring all of them at once. To minimize that movement of coming and going back to the store. Next, Roman, Roman 4. Provision should be made for adequate lighting. Provision should be made for adequate lighting. Provision should be made for adequate lighting. And a working surface and a working surface of a type and height and a working surface of a type and height to permit good posture. Provision should be made for adequate lighting and a working surface of a type and height to permit good posture. Provision should be made for adequate lighting and a working surface of a type and height to permit good posture should be provided. Should be provided. Now those are like two points in one. So I'm going to, to discuss them separately. Ya kwanza nimesema mambo ya light. Provision should be made for adequate lighting and why do you want adequate lighting when we do not have lighting we are not going to be able to see well when you cannot see well then you are bound to cause accidents in the kitchen unaweza jikata unaweza angusha vitu you can stumble on things and fall down again 
the other part is about um, a working surface. A working surface ni kama zile meza wati natumia jikoni. So appropriate type and height. Isikue too high that such that you are struggling to reach it or too low such that now you have to bend to be able to chop your ingredients and prepare them. So that is about that particular point. Roman 5. Roman 5. Materials, equipment and tools. Materials, equipment and tools should be arranged to permit the best sequence of motions. Materials, equipment and tools should be arranged to permit the best sequence of motions. That is, that is, the workflow should allow for succession of activities. That is, the workflow should allow for succession of activities. Materials, equipment and tools should be arranged to permit the best sequence of motions. That is, the workflow should allow for succession of activities. Now, in term one, I taught about kitchen organization, kwa topic one, and that is where I taught about workflow. So we said workflow is that arrangement of activities, a flowing, a flow of activities that should be happening or that should be done. And we also looked at, we also looked at how or the importance of workflow. Why should we be having a workflow? So that is where I thought about workflow. But in case, in case anyone does not know the importance of workflow, they do not have it in their notes about workflow, I can still go back to it once I'm done with the, with the today's today's topic now let's go to number three category number three design of tools and equipment Design of tools and equipment. This is our category number three under the principles of motion economy. So under that we have Roman one. The hands should be relieved from holding. The hands should be relieved from holding the work piece. When you say work piece, we are meaning the piece of work. The work piece, for example, kama ni fruits una katakata, iso fruits ndi work piece. The hands should be relieved from holding the work piece. Where this can be done by a fixture. Where this can be done by a fixture. So in other words, if there is an equipment which can be used to hold instead of you holding using your hands, then you should be able to utilize that particular equipment. For example, you want 
to extract lemon juice kutoka kwa lemon nataka kufinya ndimu so instead of kutumia vidole kungangana kufinya ndimu take a lemon squeezer and squeeze that one will work faster and it is also designed for that particular purpose iko hadi na part ya to make sure seeds as they ingia pale kwa lemon juice so that is what the point means roman 2 handles such as those of knives handles such as those of knives should be designed so as to permit handles such as those of knives should be designed so as to permit as much of the surface so as to permit as much of the surface of the hand as possible so as to permit as much of the surface of the hand as possible to come into contact with the handle to come into contact with the handle what are we trying to say equipment with handles and copy an example ya kisu make sure the handle is big enough to allow your hand to sufficiently hold it when using it. so is equal ka handle ni kadogo and you are supposed to hold it in your hands and be able to work with it so when making handles or when buying knives you consider how is the handle is it giving you maximum room to hold it sufficiently our last category number 4 time conservation time conservation that is the last category in the principles of motion economy and now this one is specifically about time how do you conserve time how do you make sure that if my practical is supposed to run for 6 hours at exactly those 6 hours i am done and i've completed every task roman 1 machines should not run idle machines should not run idle they should not run idle eg then we can see examples so that you are able to understand that machines should not run idle eg it is not desirable jerry jerry where have you been eg it is not desirable that a banner is on it is not desirable that a banner is on but no cooking is being done that a banner is on but no cooking is being done and this is something which happens a lot in the kitchen you are in a group that is making let's say pancake hata mjatengeneza unga ya pancake lakini kwa sababu mnashikilia jiko isichukuliwe na watu wa nyama mnawasha moto na mtu mmoja anasimama hapo tunapika pancake so the banner is on the gas inaendelea kuisha nyama will take a lot of time na ijapikwa but watu wa pancake wamefanya nini wameshikilia bana na wamewasha watu wengine wasitumie so that is wastage of time roman 2 two or more jobs should be worked upon two or more jobs should be worked upon at the same time two or more jobs should be worked upon at the same time full stop now for instance when you will be doing your exam hautakuwa eti unapika nyama unasimama hapo mpaka ive ndio uanze kuchukua rice no you must do those things concurrently nyama ikiendelea kuiva hapa rice inaendelea kuiva 
in the next banner so that we do not waste time. Another one. The number of motions involved. To listen a motion the movement. The number of motions involved in completing a job should be minimized. The number of motions involved in completing a job should be minimized. So here we are trying to say minimize a lot of movement as much as possible. The last point, the last Roman, I think Roman 4. Even a temporary delay of work even a temporary delay of work either by staff or machine even a temporary delay of work either by by staff or machine should not be encouraged should not be encouraged what are we trying to say do not delay work like if you are in a group and one of you is not working just that person not being able to work no just by the virtue of that one person not doing their part is going to cause a delay to every other person even to people in other groups because if food is supposed to be served at a particular time no, all the waiters need food at the same time. So no delay should be accepted. So this brings me to the end of motion economy, which was our first part. Now we go on to our second part, which has this other topic, work methods. Work methods. I said work methods are methods of work. In other words, how do we work? So work methods is our other subtopic. Remember our full topic is work methods and motion economy. And we are done with the, the part of motion economy. So now we want to get into the other part of work methods. And let's define this. Work methods are the physical actions. Work methods are the physical actions employed to perform a task. Work methods are the physical actions employed to perform a task. They are also known as work practices. They are also known as work practices. So in other words, it is how we work. Now, there is something that I want you to define below work method known as ergonomics. Ergonomics, E-R-G-O. Let me type it here. E-R-G-O-N-O-M-I-C-S. Ergonomics. Ergonomics, E R G O N O M I C S. We are going to define what that is. This is about the design of the workplace. So, write ergonomics. Ivan, this is the study of the design of a workplace. This is the study. of the design of a workplace and the systems design of a workplace and the systems which take into consideration
and systems which take into consideration human beings physical not physical physiological human beings physiological and psychological capabilities ergonomics this is the study of the design of a workplace and systems which takes into consideration human beings physiological and psychological capabilities physiological and psychological capabilities full stop so when you are talking about ergonom ergonomics we are looking at the design of the workplace and how it is going to affect the worker both physically and psychologically write another statement the goal of ergonomics The goal of ergonomics is to fit the task to the individual. Is to fit the task to the individual and not the individual to the task. To fit the task to the individual and not the individual to the task. EG. EG. So here we are trying to say with the ergonomics, we look at the task and the person performing the task. So we are trying to fit the task to the person, but not the person to the task. We are looking at task and who can perform that task without without like getting an injury or without straining too much so eg a work method a work method that employs awkward postures a work method that employs awkward postures when you say awkward posture it's like you are bending too much or you are eating things which are too far away from you that is an awkward posture in other words you are not comfortable work method that employs awkward postures to achieve the workers goal to achieve the workers goal is more likely to cause an injury is more likely to cause an injury than one more likely to cause an injury than one that maintains a neutral posture than one that maintains a neutral posture throughout the task throughout the task full stop so that is just an example of ergonomics of how we are we are like advocating for comfort at work somebody being comfortable in whatever they are doing not straining too much both physically and psychologically right as a topic ergonomics programs include ergonomics programs include 
ergonomics programs include so when we say ergonomics programs we are like trying to look at if we have to consider the worker both physically and psychologically what then should we advise the employers or what should we advise the planners or the organizers of the work places so they include Roman one analysis of work methods analysis of work methods to ensure that safe practices are being used for job tasks analysis of work methods to ensure that safe practices are being used for job tasks so like analyzing the work analyzing the method of work how are you supposed to to be working come and cut a nyama one what are you using to, to chop the meat do you have a butcher knife then how 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 low or how high is the table that you are you are supposed to be using? Are you bending? Are you reaching too far away, or is it of a comfortable height? Number two, Roman two. Training and work practice control. Training and work practice control. Controls, not control. Training and work practice controls are implemented. Training and work practice controls are implemented to ensure that proper methods are used. Training and work practice controls are implemented to ensure that proper methods are used to reduce employee exposure to risks. To reduce employees' exposure to risks. So here we are trying to say, train your staff and control what they are doing make sure they don't expose themselves to accidents or to risks. Roman three, shelves should be located at a lower level. Shelves should be located at a lower level to prevent overreaching. Shelves should be located at a lower level to prevent over reaching. So usikuwa na shelves zenye ziko too high such that you have to climb on something for you to pick whatever that is there. Roman 4. Large and heavy pots. Large and heavy pots should be lifted by two or more people. Large and heavy pots should be lifted by two or more people. So if I can go to the sufuria, Nzito, like yako, you should be assisted. So, those are the examples of economics programs. Now, on to our last subtopic for today. Best work methods and practices. Best work methods and practices. Best 
work methods and practices. So here we are trying to look at once everything is said and done, you've trained your staff, yes. But for us now to say they are using the best work methods, there are also things that the employer is supposed to do or the leader of the kitchen is supposed to do to, to make their work easier or to make sure that they know what they are supposed to do. So best work methods and practices. Number one, provide clear expectations. Provide clear expectations. E.g. visions. E.g. visions. Goals. Roles and values. Roles and values. Provide clear expectations, e.g. visions, goals, roles, and values. So do not just employ people, train them, and leave them in the kitchen. Give them your expectation. If I am the chef of the kitchen and I have the vegetable chef, the sous chef, and the other chefs in the kitchen, you give them their roles. What is your role in the kitchen? So that when they come to the kitchen, they are not stranded. They know exactly what to do. Number two, give people the opportunity to use their skills. Give people the opportunity to use their skills. Give people the opportunity to use their skills. That is, it's just like that, you're going to leave it like that. So when you say give people opportunity to use their skills, we are trying to say, when you hire people for a particular role, give them time to carry out that role for example do not employ someone as the pastry chef every time they are trying to bake no bake a b c d fanya this and this and that and it is not like they do not know how to bake they know but you are just not giving them the time to do what they are supposed to know or to show you how skilled they they are so this one will end up frustrating them so in other words in this point we are saying avoid frustrating the staff number three support your team support your team what is to support to give someone support is to like Make them feel to be part of you, even if you are their boss. So support your team, e.g. E know about their personal life. Know about their personal lives, comma, what motivates them. What motivates them? Know about their personal lives. What motivates them? And offer assistance when they are overloaded. And offer assistance when they are overloaded. So here, when you say support your team, you are saying, take care of your workers. Do not overwhelm them with work. Do not overwork them. When they are sick, give them off days. When they are too tired, give them leaves so that they are able to work well. Number four. Number four. Encourage people to contribute ideas. Encourage people to contribute ideas 
and get involved in decisions. Encourage people to contribute ideas and get involved in decisions. Here we are trying to say, ask people for their opinions. Do not just implement things and force people to do things. Ask them what is their opinion? What do they think about what should be done? Number five, encourage feedback and recognition. Encourage feedback and recognition. Encourage feedback and recognition. Here we are trying to say, your staff comfortable to give you feedback about how they feel about the job then when we say recognition we are saying remember you already have your vision your goal the roles and values when somebody does well recognize them that's why you see some companies having like the, be the best employee of the year the best performer such things recognize them for the good work that they have done Number six, encourage learning and development. Encourage learning and development. Encourage learning and development. Here we are trying to say, encourage your workers to improve their skills to learn new skills so they continue learning they continue advancing their knowledge on what they already know and also other new things if they want to diversify lastly number seven create a great workplace create a great workplace from an employee's view a great workplace from an employee's view. When we say from an employee's view, what do we mean? Remember, we have an employer and an employee. So when you are saying you have, you are creating a great workplace, don't create a great workplace according to the employer, no. Create a great workplace according to the employee and how will you be able to do that? It is when you've given them room to give you feedback about what they expect or what they would want you to do for them so a great workplace from an employee's view that is that, that is a place where employees that is a place where employees full colon a trust the people they work for a place where employees full colon a trust the people they work for b have pride in what they do Wanajibunia, have pride in what they do, that is B, have pride in what they do, and C, enjoy the work environment, enjoy the work environment, And D, enjoy the people they work with. Enjoy the work environment. And D, enjoy the people they work with. So those are like 
the ABCD, those are a great workplace according to an employee. When they can enjoy the environment, they can enjoy the people they work with, they can trust the people they work for, and they are proud in what they do. That is what constitutes a great workplace. So this brings me to the end of work methods. Now, do we have some people who do not have notes about the importance of having a workflow? Kuna mtu anaweza kuwa anahitaji hizo notes. Mwenye hana. You can type for me there kama hauna kama kuna anyone mwenye anataka. The importance of a workflow. Okay, so write at a subtopic and you can write workflow. Just write workflow as a subtopic. Write workflow as a subtopic. So we are going to define what workflow is. And then we are going to see the importance. So workflow is just a very small bit. Workflow is whereby food is processed. Workflow is whereby food is processed through the premises food is processed through the premises the premises ni sasa hiyo the hotel yama kitchen through the premises from the point of delivery na hapa tukisema point of delivery tunamaanisha delivery ya raw materials kama umeletewa sukari umeletewa unga umeletewa rice umeletewa nyama that is delivery so from the point of delivery to the point of sale Na hapa point of sale tunamaanisha wakati unauza kwa restaurant. So from raw, raw materials to the finished product. From the point of delivery to the point of sale with minimum obstruction. With minimum obstruction. Minimum obstruction full stop that is what we call workflow now write the importance of workflow and my benefits of workflow importance of workflow ama benefits ama purpose whatever you write number one minimum movement minimum movement so kama ukona workflow movement will be reduced roman 2 Minimum backtracking. Minimum backtracking. To backtrack is to keep going back. For example, ukishinda kurudi store, chukua vitu, badali ya kuchukua vitu maramoja. That is backtracking. 
Roman three, maximum use of space. Maximum use of space. Kama kuna workflow, then it makes sure that you use your space well. Maximum use of space. Roman four, maximum use of equipment. So also makes make sure that you use equipment well. Maximum use of equipment. Number five, minimum expenditure of time and effort. Minimum expenditure of time and effort. Minimum expenditure of time and effort. So again, when you have a workflow, it means you're not going to use a lot of time and you're not going to use a lot of effort or energy. So that is all you needed to know about workflow. Okay, now do we have questions? I have not given you cut one and assignment one. Tawapatia Leo. Or did I give you assignment one? Did I give you any assignment? I don't think I don't think whether I've given you any submission work okay okay nita nita watumia whatsapp nita tuma mbili i'll send assignment one and i will also send cut one for assignment one nataka mnitumie For assignment one, you will send it on Saturday. Now, when is today? Today is Wednesday. Yeah, after this class, I'm going to give you assignment one, Nakat one. For assignment one, I want you to submit on Friday. When you assignment one. Nikatuma kwa email yangu. Let me write the email there. So assignment one in Tatuma Leo. Is that too assignment one na cut one? But assignment one ni to me Friday. So Friday, anytime Friday kutoka asubui mpaka midnight, ni to assignment one. Then cut one. It cut one. It will next class. Sikum tatu malaki ni muifanye. So that next week, ni kujapa japa ni seme cut one. It okay cut one. It will Thursday next week. So assignment one, you are sending it on Friday. This Friday, tomorrow, but one. But for cut one, it will be Thursday next week. So when I send those questions, make sure you do some thorough work, some good work, because right now we are like almost finishing the syllabus and we are going to have a thorough revision. So expect a lot, a lot of questions from me. I'll be giving you questions in advance. You research, write answers, then we come and give answers. So make sure any questions I give, you do them thoroughly. Now, the other thing that I wanted to look at, I wanted to say, let me look at your course outline so that I'm able to give you a clear direction on what I want to say.
Now, next week, next week we are going to be looking at a topic known as occupational information. Occupational information. That is what we look at next week. Occupational information is not a big topic or a hard topic because it is simply about the job opportunities once you've done <coughs> your course like what kind of jobs will you expect to get whether in the government sector in the private sector whether it is self-employment that is what we'll be looking at next week so until then you can do assignment nakat Today I have classes. I'm going to class in the next but I'm going to do it again. Let me say that tomorrow. Tomorrow is the next day. You will say that I will have time. Okay, let me give you until Saturday. In case tomorrow I oversleep, you don't send it early. <laughs>